Mexico's dangerously pro-CCP government praised the Chinese repeatedly for their transparency during the coronavirus pandemic, even as the Chinese were actively engaged in a cover-up to hide the extent of the spread. Today, I have brand new documents to show you from Foreign Affairs Canada that detail the Canadian government's official strategy with the Chinese. It was flattery and sucking up. In the last week, the world has official confirmation of what we've really known all along. First, the story that the coronavirus came from some kind of wet market as opposed to the Wuhan Institute of Virology is probably a big, fat, red communist lie. Second, we know the Chinese government covered up the death count from the coronavirus in Wuhan. And third, we learned again what we all already knew that China sat on vital information the world needed to slow the spread of the virus when the world needed that important information the most. Now today we're going through the first part of a 95-page document package presented to the House of Commons Health Committee detailing Canada's official plan of engagement with the Chinese government as the coronavirus pandemic exploded out of Wuhan, China. The documents are from Foreign Affairs Canada and many of the documents summarize the conversations with Chinese officials between Foreign Affairs Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne and Chinese diplomats and the key messages of the Canadian government in those meetings and communications. The official position of the Canadian government was to, well, to steal a phrase from Ezra Levant, give the communists the tongue bath for their so-called transparency with the world about the Wuhan coronavirus while the Chinese were actively engaged in a cover-up. These documents show us how sinophilic the Canadian government continues to be even as two Canadians, Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig, are held as political prisoners by the evil communist regime. Let's get right into it. Many of these documents are dated for February 11th, but they detail meetings that occurred at the end of January. On page 6, this is a briefing note for January 30th talks between our Foreign Affairs Minister and his Chinese counterpart. These documents are meant to prepare the Minister with information, messaging, talking points, and the official Canadian position on the subject matter at hand. In this case, the virus China unleashed on the world and then lied and continues to lie about. Look at this. Encourage China to maintain a transparent approach with international partners. Transparent? Canada will continue to stand by the Chinese in this difficult time. Medical equipment requested by China should have arrived in Wuhan by now. So hang on. We didn't just gift our medical supplies. The Chinese actually asked us for our supplies and we sent them. Wish to thank Chinese partners for their collaboration. Emphasize the desire for ongoing access to Canadians in detention throughout the coronavirus situation. So we didn't ask how they were doing. We didn't ask them to let our people go. We just hoped for access. On page 33, Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister is again praising China. Here I would like to recognize the tremendous burden on China, which is fighting to maintain public health and is making a tremendous effort to contain the epidemic from spreading. Page 37, the Canadian government again praises China for their, quote, transparency. Impressed by efforts deployed to contain the outbreak and the transparent approach taken by China thus far, Canada has full confidence in China's ability to stop the outbreak. Oh, okay, that's the outbreak China didn't stop, lied about, and is now locking us into our homes, killing our jobs, killing our elderly and infirm, and robbing us of our civil liberties. I guess Minister Champagne shouldn't have had so much confidence in the communists in Beijing. Now, tomorrow we'll discuss the Canadian plan to send our medical personal protective equipment stockpile over to China. There is so much more to the story than is being reported or being admitted to by the Liberals. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreid. The World Health Organization has been completely co-opted by China, and because of that, nations around the world were given terrible advice that has led to the illness and death of many of their citizens. 
Canada should not be a part of this China-centric organization. To sign our petition calling on Canada to withdraw from the World Health Organization, please go to whowantsout.com.